Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Brand Man Sean, and today I have a special guest to introduce you to. That is Harry Socknick from Daily Playlist. He's the product lead at Daily Playlist. And if you don't know about Daily Playlist, you can think about it like this. There's a lot of playlist submission out, uh, so websites out there, but Daily Playlist is one of the most credible, and they have a lot more that you can benefit from from Daily Playlist. Uh, from um, other than just getting on playlists. So we'll talk about that, but I want to start here. Harry, if you hey, could man. just, uh, first, thanks for being on here, but if you could first um, give a general idea of why Daily Playlist is um, far, why do you think it's one of the best playlist sites out there? Obviously, with the bias, out there. <laughs> you're dropping me in straight away, mate. Um, but no, cool. So, daily playlist. Um, I think why daily playlist is one of the most credible and best like submission sites out there, um, is our viewpoint on how we built the product. You know, we've really come from a sort of like T pronged angle here. Um, we've been our experience, like as a team. Um, is in curation, is being musicians, is a mix between self-releasing, is working with labels, also working with management. So we've had such a like a whole view of what was needed. And with daily playlists, we feel like what we've achieved is a such a robust free layer for mm -hmm. artists because we understand the playlisting space, um, especially for I guess the earlier stage artists, the mid-level artists, um, can be very hit and miss. You know, you 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 know you can go onto some other sites and spend what, up to $100, $200 and not really get much in return. Um, so for us, having such a robust free um, tier of like 25 free submissions to playlists a week um, really is what we pride ourselves on in providing that opportunity for artists of all levels. Um, but also what we provide, uh, pride ourselves on is the solutions uh, we provide to the curators as well. You know, um, we like to think we make their lives a lot easier through our um, submission review flow um we help them organize their submissions and we also help them dig a little bit deeper you know get get below the sort of like initial like just song pitching to understand the artist to really find um the music that suits their playlist and that they're looking for um and not only do we offer that we offer tools to help grow their profiles not just in terms of followers and engagement but also in terms of branding um, and yeah, we also open, we also pride ourselves on like the community we have on both the curator and the artist side um, in that we have like networking opportunities on our site for both the artists to like receive feedback on their music and also for curators to connect with other curators and really start building out their network for um, situations such as playlist trading, um, you know, so um, yeah, we really to sum it up, we pride ourselves basically on the whole approach that we've taken and the understanding and also providing the opportunities on many different levels. All right. So it sounds like there's a full ecosystem. You guys aren't like strictly transactional. You put you put more into what the artist gets out of it beyond just getting on a playlist. Same for the playlist your side. I like to I like how you, you know, even just talked about just the relationships between other playlisters. All right. I don't really know um, of anybody, I think, that has taken that full ecosystem. And I'm not I don't know every single playlist. Right. This, but this is a, a true statement. Right. It's not just because I'm talking to Harry. I really don't know anybody who's taking that full ecosystem type of approach. What inspired that? Mm -hmm. Just before we start, there is another platform. I can't I don't I want to be honest. Playlist the Club also offer a, a really good um, sort of full ecosystem experience. So shout out to them, you know um but what is what was that sorry the question what inspired it yeah so i think it again uh, sort of taking it back to the understanding um of being the curator being in the curator shoes ourselves and reviewing submissions growing playlists and trying to build them in a way that you have genuine engagement you know um being in that shoes those shoes for the curator and just yeah sort of building a product for ourselves in a kind of selfish way to start off with um that definitely helped and then again from like the artist side like as a side hustle quote unquote um i work with like independent artists myself managing acts um the whole you know talking to managers labels whoever it may be within the ecosystem and it's especially talking to our community and listening to what they want you know um so 
all of these different factors really inspire what Daily Playlist has now built to become um, and what it will also be um, in the future. You know, we've got, we got a lot of exciting plans to, to span beyond um, our current capabilities and further. So, yeah. Dope, dope. Now, you talk about, just to get a little bit deeper into you, right, and your background, uh, you say, you know, you're managing artists on the side, but um, you were an artist at some point too, right? Yeah, so this is this is a while back now. But so I started playing my background. If we take it like right back, I'm on about like till I was like 10 years old. I um, <laughs> I started playing drums and okay. um, I'm from like a little town in the northeast of England. And it was a quite a small school. And I was the only drummer in my like year. So from the age of 10, I was the only guy to call on for bands basically mm. so from then that's how my musical journey really started um and as i mentioned earlier sort of working with many different projects whether we're self-releasing working with managers working with labels um and then it all accumulated in the, the band that was sort of lasting i guess like full time um which is sort of like i i'm a i'm a sucker for like garage rock punk rock um so it was like a sort of like punk garage rock band and yeah, we, we did a, like, a few tours of the UK, went across to Europe, also did some shows in Asia, worked with amazing supportive management, but we're most importantly self-releasing as well. So we were still very hands-on on the whole process, um, which at the time as well, I was studying a degree in music business. Um, again, had amazing mentors um, at my university who really, you know, I was a bit a, being able to apply what I was learning in real time which I think right, made a right, huge right. difference in how I viewed the industry um, and where my interest like, really started to peak in making a transition from, I guess, musician onto the other side of the sort of spectrum and uh, yeah, running now like a, primarily a submission uh, platform. So with that being said, I don't want to spend too much time on that side of things, but can you give me your logic breakdown of transitioning from a musician to the to business and I asked because there's a couple of general ways it might happen with people one there's hey I'm really bad at this right just coming to a realization and then say <laughs> but I want to be around it and be in business and then there's a I start to get caught up in in, in some of the business side and whether I'm good or not I might never realize I'm not good but I just started to get so much traction on this business side. It was almost, it just started to happen, right? I caught a groove and I'm sure there's some other routes, but what was your thought process that made the transition happen? So I think it was a bit of both, <laughs> if I'm being honest. It's a bit of the realization of when, yeah, the realization of the people who are surrounding with, surrounding myself with in the artist side, you know, I, at the time I was living in Brighton, such an amazing, vibrant musical community. But these guys, they live, breathe, like dream about their instruments, you know, that is their do or die. And mm -hmm. when I'm research, sat there researching like blockchain technology and the music industry and my guitarist is downstairs in our house, like sat writing, that's when the sort of, yeah. you know, I was like, maybe, maybe I'm better suited on the other side and I should let the people who really want to play drums, for example, in my case, uh, be the pioneers <laughs> in that regard um so yeah I think it was just a realization of where my my interests started to lie and yeah I've always been a massively like nerdy guy which I think I don't know about you but I think fits in very well in like when you're looking like products how they're built looking at new tech um so yeah it kind of just became a more natural fit I think over time and like I said um the the musicians who really live and breathe it I think that yeah, I have so much so much admiration for them. Um, but I just kind of realized that wasn't I wasn't sat there doing my paradiddles, you know. I was sat there, yeah, like I was saying, researching. So that was the realization. Got you. Okay. Oh, well, and what was that? What's that saying mean? I gotta you, you said something. I, I, paradiddles. Yeah, what does that mean? So this uh, when you're drumming, you have to practice your like strokes. So you've awesome. got to practice the way that you hold the, the, the hold the stick and also the way that you hit the drum, you know, there's like three different motions and where you got to sort of tap it. There's like a, like, I can't remember the specific names, 
but there's a tap. I remember there's like an upstroke and a downstroke kind of thing. But a paradiddle is like when you use your right hand. So it's like right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. I don't know if you can hear me tapping the desk at the same time. But it's one of the one of the fundamentals of drumming. It's kind of like if you're a guitarist and you're practicing your scales. It's on that level of importance. And yeah, like I said, when I realized I wasn't doing that, I wasn't sat there with the metronome out, whereas all my peers were. I was like, yeah. maybe, maybe it's time to make the shift. Got yeah. you. Gotcha. Yeah. Thanks for the for the the education. All good. The <laughs> <laughs> all good, man. All good. Oh man. Um. So, with that being said, you know, obviously you made that transition. I mean, daily playlist is is really being formidable in the playlist space, and you know it's riddled with scams, uh, bad stigmas of one some uh, validated, some invalidated. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would love to know as somebody who's in it, right? Because um, mm-hmm. of course, marketing, me as uh, who has a marketing agency, we that's a part of what people request. And in many cases, we're, we're very personally, um, very, very selective, right? We don't even market that as like a front end service. Hey, we offer playlisting or anything like that. So we're very selective on who we're even willing to do something like that with because of all of this stigma and, and et cetera. So I would love to know your thoughts on playlisting like what it's gone through and then Mm -hmm. where it's going for as somebody who's really in the trenches of playlisting cool so i think to contextualize like where it's heading to be i think is a good place to actually start um because then i can bring it back i think where it's heading it's all about accuracy it's all about honesty and being objective about Mm -hmm. the campaigns that you're running Um, The way, as we primarily work on Spotify, whenever I'm talking about streaming, just for context, I'll also be referring to Spotify. Um, But the way that the Spotify algorithm works, you know, the, what we all look up to, what we're all trying to beat every day. um, It's based off like genuine engagement is, I guess, a good way to encapsulate it. It's, it's all about how many, like not just streams, but let's say it's all about like how you can, if you're constantly building upon last month so let's say you're on like 800 monthly listeners from one month then you have to go to 900 monthly listeners and playlisting is one way to like obviously achieve this also the the accuracy in like a spotify algorithm they can detect for example like body plays they can detect like skip rates it's these all these different parts like come into it come into play um especially about where the the hot topics about playlisting um, at the moment because i know the stigmas around it um are that it could be unhealthy it could easily go wrong if you're running a campaign because you might get put into the wrong playlists so i think there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure on the artist to do their due diligence um at the moment so for example you know you got to understand the genre of your song really inside and out not just think what you think it is and what the genre you wrote the song uh when you're writing go through that process you might let's say you might intend to write a house track but by the time you're finished it might come out as being like more in the realms of techno but you still in that idea of like oh it's a house track so you're going to go into daily playlists you're going to go through all the like the house playlists and submit it to there and then let's say it ends up on a house playlist and then gets skipped a lot because it's actually more techno that's detrimental to the Spotify algorithm. And this is where the bad stigma, I think the main bad stigmas are like coming from is like how sensitive it can be um, when conducting these campaigns. Obviously there's also the stigmas around botting and um, yeah, mainly around botting and payola. Um, from our end, we don't engage in uh, any playlist that comes onto daily playlist there uh, we can guarantee it's not botted you know also when it comes to um payola there's something we do not engage in in the slightest we don't ever advise people to um, engage in because botting and payola sort of come as a hand in hand sort of package if anyone can guarantee you streams you know most of the time it's too good to be true um so yeah i think that's where playlisting is is heading in that regard it's it's about Build on the curator side, it's about building a playlist that flows, that's well curated, um, and that can bring genuine engagement. Whereas on the artist side, it's about being honest, it's about being objective, 
and it's about taking your time and learning that's what a lot of people don't tend to do they usually go into our platform or a, pl a similar platform purchase a load of credits mm -hmm. and then all in one go you know like this playlist got a lot of followers this player's got a lot of followers and they spend it all Whereas we always advise to take a sort of like learning approach, a testing approach. We, you get 25 free submissions on daily playlists a week. Don't use all 25 in one go, you know, use like five, 10, like after vetting the playlist, listening through it, making sure it's an honest fit, your track. Um, and then seeing what the responses are like, you know, the curator might give you feedback like, oh, this isn't actually a fit uh, genre wise to my playlist. From then, you know, you have to sort of come back, reassess, your what you thought your track was and really take these learnings and these feedback seriously to have the most streamlined like campaign and uh, the one that can really help you i guess boost the algorithm um, in that regard and find fans okay but, so that's yeah. it's interesting the point you made about the artist being objective right uh, yeah like you said not what you intend to create but what you actually create the end product um so do you find artists have trouble doing that still yeah i think it's like uh, in the nicest way possible yeah i think it's like creativity is always such a like a, a sensitive subject you know um mm -hmm. so i think and there's also not really too many ways to get this objective view that i was on about you know there's no like black and white this is exactly this but i think it's all about learning and doing your uh, planning due diligence and your research to find the best playlist that are best match rather than you know while saying about like reading the title and saying okay this sounds like it's going to be a fair right. so i think yeah it, on the artist side like one bit of advice is just take your time while doing these campaigns it's going to be so much more beneficial and you'll also learn a lot about your music and where uh, this fits in terms of like the genre spectrums you know um, and also it can open doors in terms of insights as well, you know, could, you know, different fans, you know, you could be like, okay, sweet. I'm actually fitting into a lot of these playlists. Maybe I should start applying for gigs more in this direction, this genre direction than what I was doing before. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's a very beneficial process. It's a, it's a lengthy process, but yeah, um, being objective and doing his research and doing due diligence um really pays dividends in the end right right i can definitely see that like paying off after you do all the work right now you have it right you don't have to do that research you just stay mm -hmm. in the bag and continue to create and i hadn't thought about even thinking about how your gigs and the rest of your branding might change Absolutely. on what you're getting from the playlist feedback that's dope uh, i mean along those same lines right in terms of artist accountability I think these are really important subjects. You mentioned bought it playlist um, and not no one being able to guarantee a specific number. So it's 2022. Not I don't like the date interviews or whatever, but like it is. And I feel like that message has been out so long, yet I still have conversations, right, with artists, uh, whether it's for me to work for them or they're asking my, for my advice on a decision they're making. And many people still say, like, well, can you guarantee this? Or what's going to be my return on ad spend? Or how much money am I going to make back from getting on these playlists? All right, there's still that mentality. And I, I get it that you, like, you say, hey, I want to take this seriously and treat her like a business. And you've heard from all these other business conversations outside of music, right? That you should be looking at these types of metrics to make sure it's worth your investment. I get it, right? But mm -hmm. I, that's things everybody pretty much acknowledges like the music industry is a little bit flipped it's a little bit different right so Slightly, man, yeah. <laughs> so one I, I want to ask you why do you think well no why can no, nobody guarantee um a, a amount of streams uh from a playlisting standpoint and then I want to get a little bit more into just the music industry and how it works from your perspective but um but yeah mm -hmm. why do they can you not guarantee streams? Um, I think the the simple answer is is because they fluctuate. You know, um, like if you have real listeners on your playlists, like the process of like curating and building a brand 
and building out these playlists. So you you know the the way you get these listeners is you really put a, a comprehensive list that works together of amazing music and selections. However, you've got to get these people coming back. Like every time you've got you make an update, you know, it's not just like it, it, the one time thing. They're they're returning customers on the curator side. Mm-hmm. So there's that human element that just doesn't make it like guaranteed in that sense. So if someone says to you like, oh, we can guarantee over a 30 day period, 40,000 streams. Um, and they're saying, I think the main thing around that, like is because there is data to support, you know, estimates and you look at your Spotify for artists and um, you, the curators do have insights along these lines. But if they're like, okay, pay me $20, I can get you placed on a playlist that's going to guarantee you this, not in the terms of like feedback or terms of like a submission, but in terms of like pay for placement, which is payola. This is when the red flags are waved. And this is when like, okay, this is all basically a big sale scam. It's just not, it's just something you can't guarantee. And like when you start adding up the red flags, it's just, yeah is something that it becomes quite obvious what's legitimate and what you can avoid um you know so yeah it's yeah i'd say yeah to sum it up is the human the human element of it mixed also with the other sort of supporting layers of how the submission process is done for example whether it is just paying straight up for replacement or paying for feedback from a curator or for a submission so what do you say to the artist that says, how am I ex- going to get my money back from this playlisting? I would say in terms of money, I think that's not just about playlisting. I think that's the state of, uh, you know, streaming platforms and the royalty rates in general. I think there's a bigger issue um, at hand with regards to that. You know, it's, it's, you Realistically, unless you're able to drive um, thousands, like hundreds of thousands to millions of streams off playlisting campaign, which just to put into context is most likely not going to happen, mm-hmm. really not going to happen. Um, yeah, I think putting into context like that, I think you're never going to necessarily make your money back like one for one or be in profit from a playlisting campaign what playlisting campaigns are is obviously about like marketing and promotion and like finding new fans and it's about having an objective is the way i like to look at it so when if you're going into a playlisting campaign you can just look at streams as an objective but what's the the most sort of like i guess tangible thing is like seeing your spotify followers going up because then that's getting the people within your ecosystem so when you have your next release if they start following you they're gonna they're you're gonna come up on their release radar you know um it's also to start to learn about like where your music works it's all about the analytics and insights that are provided through these campaigns um so yeah i wouldn't it's, it's an investment obviously and it's unfortunate that it doesn't tend to be like a one-to-one or like even a profitable return but the insights you can gain from playlisting um and the knock-on effect it can have let's say you do a playlisting campaign you then hit the right uh, playlist that then sort of starts triggering a load of other playlist ads. You then finding new fans. You then get picked up by the spot of our algorithm. You then get added into the different, um, yeah, the different um, playlist by Spotify. And then, you know, then you might get picked up by uh, a manager or a label because you're in like the fresh finds, for example. I know many artist managers who are in that fresh finds like uh, every week just scouting through and I know many artists who've also been signed because of their songs being in fresh finds. So it's more again to sum it up, it's not about the, in my opinion, the the sort of return in profits. It's about what you can get uh, analytics wise, insights wise. And also if you do hit that golden like campaign, like taking the opportunities that sort of come that way and opening the doors that possibly wouldn't have been there if you hadn't conducted uh, the campaign in the first place. Nice. Nice. That's a great great answer to that um it's way better than what i tell people <laughs> <laughs> what do you tell people <laughs> it, just, it, it just doesn't make sense i really don't go far beyond the fact that like a one-to-one return 
early on when you're investing in your music just shouldn't be expected. Absolutely. That's a more of a long-term investment before you start to see a return. And once you hit that exponential curve, right, you have the buildup from any type of campaign, multiple types of campaigns, right? It's not even a one-off campaign most likely that you're going to do. You're not likely not going to do one campaign or even two campaigns before you start seeing money back. You, uh, It's going to be a culmination of campaigns invested over time, some paid, some not paid, that builds the audience and gets you in a position where you can then monetize, right? So Absolutely. It's pretty much that. But, um, but I love, especially the insights in the way that there's you can leverage opportunities that come from playlisting. I, I like how you broke that down. Uh, with that mm-hmm. being said, you know, you guys like don't just have playlisters or artists who are requesting playlists as people you guys work with. You guys also have this relationship with labels and are allowing artists to benefit um, from that relationship as well. Can you speak more on how you got, like what this label opportunity is exactly and then why it came about? Awesome. So yeah, the label opportunity um, at this at the time of like talking to you, Sean, is like fairly new. Um, it's in a closed beta right now um, to our like pro community, which is our subscribed here um but basically what we're trying to achieve with this label tool is the opportunity for our uh, artist community to connect um, with other independent like record labels you know like the the people who are passionate about music and then on the label side um i suppose a lot of artists won't see this but we provide robust a and r solutions um so the way, another way to put that is we provide them with the tools to really search through the music that they receive to find the right music for their roster. Um, we know there's many different touch points that labels look at, whether it be how active and engaged your audience are on like socials or on TikTok, how hard you even work in these socials, you know, um, versus, okay, cool, what's their like touring history? Like we allow the artist to upload um, a one pager um or what well, we suggest the one page they can upload as long as they'd like but given a bit more insight to the labels so they could say cool we are xy xyz band from let's say the uk we've worked with this label before this label before we've reached these achievements we've toured with these artists um and yeah we we, we want to streamline that process i we i think we've all been uh in when you've been trying to search your contacts at labels and you're like on the seventh page of like Google, <laughs> and then you finally see, you finally see it like pop up, and that, that that's rewarding. But it shouldn't be that hard, especially for labels who want to actually um, expand their rosters. You know, so we've had over I think over two hundred thirty thousand artists use our platform in the past year, which is pretty mind blowing to be fair. And so, and we have two hundred thousand submissions plus a week. With like that, which equates to about like 15,000 unique um, tracks. And, you know, we're sat on like such a talented community that we don't feel right just sitting on this data that we're sat on in terms of like acceptance rates. We want to be able to connect these artists with labels who want to push, who genuinely care about right. finding new artists and pushing their careers. Um, so it just kind of seems like a, if we build the tool in the right way, it seems like a win-win for the labels. They can save themselves time. They don't have to yet use their Gmail and people send them download links and, you know, yeah. they can, they can streamline their process. They can set also on the label side, they can set custom parameters for their campaign. So they can search for artists in specific regions with specific metrics attached to them. So if you turn up on an artist rate uh, on a label's radar, the chances are they're actually interested in you because they've gone through all these processes to refine and to search through the music that they got. So having this, I guess, networking opportunity seemed extremely important because on the playlisting side, we're helping you find your audience, but you find your community is one way of putting it. Whereas with this tool, it's finding your like internal community, your team, you know, the guys you can trust and the guys that are going to help you uh, go through all the points that we just discussed, you know, with like the analytics, the uh, really understanding the campaigns. Um, so, yeah, it kind of felt like a very natural fit um, for what we're looking to build as like a whole with daily playlists. Got you. Got you. It does seem so. Um, 
because obviously you guys already attracting artists and it seems like the label service experience is very similar to how you guys service playlisters right mm -hmm. it's, a, it's it's a nice machine you guys are building there which i which i love uh and are you obviously with the ecosystem y'all are building i'm sure the labels over time as y'all test that you'll figure out how to integrate that and what do you think how do you think this fits into the industry as a whole? Where do you guys see, like, you know, daily playlists going? So, like, in terms of daily playlists as a timeline, we, at the moment, we've got, we've got a lot of exciting things planned. I know that's the sort of go-to, <laughs> the go-to <laughs> playlist. You know, just watch this space, man. Um, but, no, we're, we're really focused on um, quality um, in the next, like, coming months. You know, we want to improve our site um, in terms of the flows, in terms of the effectiveness of our tools, in terms of the quality, um, result in terms of results as well, um, we're very aware of where we're sat currently and where we want to go. In uh, I guess in that respect, like building out the label submission tool, making our uh, we have an algorithmic um, submission process as well, which is our subscribed here, um, which yeah matches the song to the playlists that are best fit and most likely to actually make an impact which is really cool works super well but we want to improve that and we want to basically we, we've expanded very quickly we're a very small team so it's myself and then a developer and then two advisors uh is is daily playlist so we're an extremely small team but we managed to crank out a lot in the past like two and a half years so now it's about really improving what we've built um why that fits in i think in terms of the industry what we're seeing right now is a lot of saturation you know whether it's like the, what it was like eighty thousand songs a day or uploaded to, to spotify um i'm sure you found it sean like the amount of people obviously wanting to run a tiktok campaign but just wanting to put tiktoks out there or not really understanding the process like 100 percent and yeah. finding the quality over the quantity and finding what's really going to cut through the clutter um, is where I think the industry is going to head. And to contextualize that a little bit more, I really believe it's going to be around sort of a direct to fan like aspects, you know, um, really having these community building tools. Um, there's some amazing ones out there like Mandolin, Crowdmouth, Fangage, Lalo, Faith for Fans, Planet Fans. They're, they're really amazing like tools that, that can really help develop artists' connections with their fans. But also build upon that, give the fans something more to than just sort of being a fan of the music, being a fan of the brand, of the people, what they stand for, and how they treat their audiences. Because with where, where the saturation comes um, into play is obviously harder to make a living then. Like, especially when you're looking at the likes of like the Spotify, um, just in terms of royalty payments, you know, like everyone, and also with like I think again, like please correct me if I'm wrong, but with like TikTok. It's not like you're not going to get paid and like directly that much from TikTok that you're going to make a living. If you're an artist running a campaign to write the song, it's about what you can do with that audience yeah. and how you can monetize that audience. Right. Um, and I mean, monetize in the nicest way possible, you know, how you can bring benefits to the audience, but also making a career that's sustainable for yourself. And I think also with the likes of the blockchain world, whether you love it or you hate it, I think there's a lot of platforms out there that can also uh, bring a lot of benefits and keeping the power in the artist's hands. You know, they were, they've been saying for years, I feel like it's the golden age for independent artists, um, which is, is still very true, but I feel like it's only gonna, with the new technologies that are on the horizon, I feel like it's gonna be still even more um, in the hands of the artists, less responsibility on labels and more responsibility on communities, whether they're DAOs, for example, um, in the world of blockchain or whether they are just more rewarding your fan base through you know engaging on your releases like sharing the songs that they can get rewarded for that for example on some of these platforms that i name um so yeah i think i think community building and engagement is where the industry will be heading and and really trying to turn those like the, the fandom approach and turning like getting your first 10 paying fans to your 100 paying fans to your thousand paying fans um yeah i think i think that's where it's going to be heading mainly got you got you yeah i, I could definitely see that i agree with so much of what you said and I, I think a good way 
for artists to think about the investment, right? Because you mentioned TikTok building out your content and figuring out how to monetize it later. Well, that same thing applies. I don't think we, I think people have started to understand that for content marketing, right? You, you, you work your content, you work your content, you build an audience and the ask comes later. Music, I guess people forget that music is content, right? Mm -hmm. So you might be putting money behind it to try to build awareness for that content faster. Sometimes you're just doing it organically, algorithmically, however you want to say it, but it's still the exact same. Music is just content marketer, marketing. So the, the cleaner people understand that, then you'll realize that the monetization point comes later, but it's building mm -hmm. real community and engagement, um, which is what makes it happen in a real way. And what you guys are doing, um, you know, that I love is also the artists forget that there's a community aspect on the consumer side, but there's a community building aspect on the business side, whether it's playlisters, whether it's labels, whether it's marketers, whoever, right? Those are the people that continue to give you payback and dividends as you build those relationships in one way or another. But I think it's hard for people who haven't gotten to that point mm -hmm. where that guy that you knew is now doing something else and it's in a position that can help you because you're somewhere else and you've all might moved along. I think it's hard for people to uh, see that and, and quantify it. But um, you guys sound to be to be really playing an integral part in that game. And, that, and that's dope. It's really mm -hmm. dope. Nice, man. So, um, I mean, with that being said, Harry, I think you've been really insightful in this interview. Daily Playlist is really being one of the more forward thinking platforms i've um been familiar with you mentioned another one i think you said playlist club i have to check them out i have seen their ads by the way but i see so many ads you never know what's on the other side of it right and hey, especially, hey, especially, especially when it mentions playlist right so it's just yeah, like yeah. Ah, you know <laughs> so bringing it around for me is due diligence <laughs> due diligence on any playlisting campaign whether it's from you checking your song and submitting your own song due, due diligence or if it's you've seen an ad Someone saying submit to playlist on our site. Check out that play. Like check out that site. Does it seem legitimate? Oh, are well, are there any red flags? If there are red flags, cut it. Don't risk it. Just nice. yeah, trust your intuition as well. So, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Is there anything that you want to leave the community with? Hmm. Um. Other other than uh, check out daily playlists. You know, where we got, um, as I've been mentioning, we've got an amazing free tier for artists. We've got amazing free tools for curators. Um, and we're looking to really build uh, a genuine product that can help artists in their career. Um, that does that goes beyond playlisting as well. You know, that we see this as step one in what we are planning with the platform. Um, we've got the label submission tool. Um, and yeah, I think um, we'd love to for you guys to come check it out um if you have any feedback around the platform any questions please drop us an email at info at dailyplaylist.com um and uh yeah i'd love to talk to all of you guys there's me sat behind the uh, customer service email as i mentioned <laughs> we're only a small team so any any concerns any complaints it all goes direct to me so uh, yeah i love love to hear these honest bits of feedback so check it out give us some feedback and let's build something together that the whole community um can make use of but I love it, man. Thanks again, Harry. Amazing. Hopefully, Thank you so much, man. For you guys. Yeah. <laughs> no problem, man. Anytime you want to hop back on. Glad to be able to see what you can uh what you guys hey, Everybody check out daily playlist. Um, that's it for this one. Tune in next time. Peace. Peace.